Matthew chapter 4, the first 11 verses. Amen. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted of the devil. I want you to notice the dichotomy in that first part of the text. Jesus was led of the Spirit to be tempted of the devil. Sometimes your temptation is spirit-led. Amen. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, it is written, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If, notice if you will, that the enemy often attempts to, to call into question who you are. Jesus knew he was the son of God, but notice both times he said, if. How many have ever had that opportunity where the enemy has asked you, if you're truly a child of God? Yeah, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written. Notice the pattern. The enemy calls into question who Jesus is. Jesus only answers by what the word says. You've got to learn how to answer the enemy by what the word says. I am what the word said I am. It is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And this I will give you, he said, if you bow down and worship me. The first problem with that is that the enemy had, did not have his name on the deeds of any of the properties that he was offering to give. You can't give somebody what you don't own. And the enemy will offer you things, but the Bible said the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein, which means he don't own nothing. Amen. Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. For it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him and angels came and attended him. I want to preach from this subject today. Repeat it with me for clarity and just say enough is enough. Anybody in here who that, that particular text resonates with, that you're going through a little something in your life, a situation dealing in a particular relationship, something happening on the job, and you're just at a point of saying, enough is enough. Well, let's go back into the disco music time. All those young folks sitting back there don't know nothing about what I'm talking about. But Donna Summer, I ain't the only one who remembers Donna Summer, stated in a song, enough is enough. She said, I can't go on no more. She had been in a relationship that she finally saw was going nowhere. She saw that it was time for her to move on and do better. 
She saw that it was time to stop putting up with all the heartache, all of the pain, all of the sorrow, all of the wrongdoing, all the misdirection and misinformation. It was time to say enough is enough. Brothers and sisters, just like Donna Summer, there should come a time in our lives that we should see the enemy for who he really is. Let me just juxtapose um, uh, a modern day figure so you understand what I'm saying against the backdrop of who the enemy is. I'm not talking about the little red man with a pitchfork and a tail that's sitting on your shoulder. Uh, but how many understand that just as much as God manifests himself by working through people, that the enemy will manifest himself working through folks? Am I right about it? So even as much as God is here right now, he is too. How'd he get here? In your Toyota. Y'all ain't gonna help me. In your Mercedes. Amen. He came when we came. Oh yeah, we should see that his only purpose is to convince us to go against God's will. He's trying to bring us down and not let us get up. And we need to get up and do what the young folks sing in that song and shake, shake, shake. Shake the devil off. We need to put him under our feet. We need to take a stand and tell him that enough is enough. In our text, not only was Jesus tired of the devil messing with him, but his children ought to be tired of him as well. He's always sticking his nose somewhere where he has no business. We should be tired of him stealing our joy. Tired of him taking things from us. Tired of him trying to kill us and trying to damage the reputation of our family and friends. If you don't remember anything else about this message, remember that the enemy will always try to give you something or convince you to do something for him so he can have power over you. That's why the song said, that old Joe May song, some of you remember it said, don't let the devil ride. If you let him ride, he'll want to drive. Don't let him ride. Look back a few verses before our text. Matthew 3, 16 and 17 says, And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. After that, Jesus was led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit to be tempted of the tempter, to be tempted of the devil. After he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. He was hungry and tired. Notice, if you will, brothers and sisters, this is when the devil likes to step in. After you've fasted, after you've prayed, after you've had no sleep, after you've changed your ways and tried to do right, after you've become weary in well-doing, when you're at your weakest point. Oh, the devil don't attack you soon as you get out of revival and you're all pumped up and feeling like Popeye who just ate a can of spinach, but he comes after you when you are at your weakest point. When you seem to be at your weakness, that's when he really gets busy. But brothers and sisters, enough is enough. In order for us to be able to say enough is enough, we must be prepared. 1 Corinthians 2 and 9, but as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have it entered into the hearts of man the thing which God have prepared for them that love him. Satan will always try to get you to do something other than what you are supposed to do. Paul said it like this, when I would do good, the devil was always around. Amen. That which I should do, I don't. That which I should not do is that that I do. Now, let's not look like pious peacocks of righteousness because all of us have had the opportunity to do what we know we ought not do. 
he told Jesus, command the stones to be made bread so he could feed himself. And Jesus looked at him and, and said, I'm hungry.